heads or tails. Heads. Told you. Hmm. I never find that as satisfying as I'd imagined. Chin up. There's always next time. I suppose there is. Hello and welcome to a second part two of Spoiled Games. It's all about Bioshock Infinite. We're going to focus now on a little bit more of the story, some of the technical aspects, and the gameplay. But once again, the show is called Spoiled Games. Not, we're not going to tell you anything. We will be spoiling everything about this game. Bioshock Infinite, and at least our estimation, is one of the finest things you can play. Go finish it, and then come back and watch the show, you'll get a lot more out of it. But with that being said, I'd like to introduce uh, yet again our panel, Kevin Van Ord, Senior Editor at GameSpot.com. Hey. Thanks for staying around. Absolutely. And Editor-in-Chief of Giant Bomb at GiantBomb.com, Jeff Gertzman. Howdy. All right, so uh, one thing we didn't get to in the last episode, we all realized it once the cameras were off, was the Lutesses, these twins that intrude upon the story in a very darkly comical way. Yeah, well, I think it starts out a little more straight comical and then darkens yeah. as you figure out more and more about what that world really is. Uh, they, they were my favorite characters in the whole game. You know, just the popping up at the random moments. You know, kind of to help you, but later on you're like, uh, are these people really pointing me in the right direction? And they're direction, so bemused by, by the entire thing. Everything else, everyone yeah. else is either freaking out that there's a man running around killing people, or... And, and they're just excited to watch the results of their yeah. twisted experiment, you know? It's like, as, as ostensibly the people that, that put a lot of this in motion, uh, that they're able to just kind of sit back and just go like, hmm, eh, that's about how we figured it'd turn out. Surprising. Surprising that it worked? Surprising that it didn't kill him. But a magnetic repulsive field around one's body can come in handy. If it doesn't kill you. A fair point. Now, did you put together that they're also the ones who are rowing you into the lighthouse at the very beginning of the game? I mean, I, I should have because it's the only English accent that, that, right. that you yeah, hear in Infinite. Yeah, yeah. yeah yes. that was, for me, that was that was pretty clear early on. But especially because they always hit the same tone, more or less, for a while in the game, which is like, that was very comical, the thing about the rowing, um, you know, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, when you disembark and he's like, uh, is anybody going to be meeting me here? I'd certainly hope so. It does seem like a dreadful place to be stranded. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, you know, so they, they, they hit that comic spot for a while to, to tie all that stuff together. Once you get to the end of the game and you realize what a role that they played in the child who was mm -hmm. given away to wipe away the dead. I mean, that's really yeah. the guilt that Booker is trying to absolve himself of. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about them in the end. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I mean, they, they set a lot of this stuff in motion, you know, if, if, you're, if you're finding all the Vox phones and going through a lot of that stuff, like, you know, the Lutes, or, you know, the, the Lutes of this world put together making that city fly, created yeah. the contraption that created tears, like uh, a lot of things uh, flowed out of, out of uh, the, the female Lutes, and then, you know, and when, then when they come together, yeah, finding sibling. all the, the boxophones about the, yeah, sibling, <laughs> uh, and, and all that stuff, like, it, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> But there's an element of um, like uh, forgiveness there because at this because they get to the stage where um, you know where it's clear that they have a lot to atone for themselves and you know there's that line where they say that Booker is their hair shirt just like the brand on his his uh, his hand is his hair shirt um, so obviously they're trying to atone for for the mistakes as much as Booker is, is trying to atone for his. Which, which really ties in with the central theme that all these people are somehow, in one good or bad way, trying to make up yeah. for something really bad they well, did right. in their lives. So if, if you're traipsing around the multiverse like that, you're eventually going to screw something up yeah. and create some sort of <laughs> horrific, endless loop. But then there's that sort of central tragedy, which is the character of Elizabeth, or Anna, this, you know, the, the, the daughter of the Booker DeWitt mm -hmm. that we see in, in, in the flashbacks. That, I think, is probably one of the greatest technical achievements I've ever seen in a game. Uh, that, that her animations, their decision to go with the stylized look, I think all works in the favor to just evoke an emotional response. That yeah. If anyone was worried if, if it was an escort mission, I probably would have escorted her through the game <laughs> because I cared about her. Yeah, they, they did a, a, a fantastic job with that, you know, it's, and some of that they showed uh, pre-release, you know, her getting taken away by Songbird and reaching out. And, you know, her being frightened, um, kind of hiding from Songbird and stuff like that. Like that's that's uh, that's the thing that makes that whole game work. I think if they didn't nail yeah. the animations on Elizabeth, I, I think I'll, the game would be a much uh, harder sell. Yeah, no, I, I would have to agree. I mean, if, if you just, I, I think it was. Granted, I had been so impressed about the game, but when you sit down, you grab the guitar, and she starts singing. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. And that's what I was like, this is exactly what a Disney animation would be like, both I think in the classic sense, you know, when, when Walt was still alive, but then mm -hmm. even something like Beauty and the Beast, just these beautiful, fluid animations. Yeah. But that's part of the, the selling of the world, pretty much. I mean, we have to believe that this is a utopia. And what, what's more utopian than, you know, uh, a girl with wide eyes. And, Trapped in uh, a castle. E exactly, mm -hmm. and, and that's how the game has to begin, to, to sell that these people would believe this is utopia. I and mean, I, I remember the, the first few times she gets mad at you. I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. Be my friend. Can I just reload this and not kill those people? Is yeah. that gonna, I'm like, no, probably not. Like, can I make sure she's looking the other way? Uh, yeah. I mean, the, obviously, I, I think all of us have discovered, you know, small technical quirks, which yes. easily solved yeah. by a reload. <laughs> and I, thank God it was a game that was more than happy to play sections over again. For, for me, it ended up being that, you know, you. you the enemies don't really mess with her uh, at yeah. all, and you know they, they kind of explain up front. You know, you don't have to protect her. Don't worry about it, which is smart because otherwise, I think it's very otherwise smart it's decision. an escort mission, and that's not a fun game anymore. Um, but seeing her cowering in a corner, and then AI guys trying to get to me, running up, getting stuck on her for a couple of seconds, yeah. then just running around <laughs> her to come get to me. I, I yeah, uh, I, I think there, and I, I think where they try to make their solution is you'll be so focused on how many enemies are throwing at you that. You're only going to notice Elizabeth when she's like, "Hey, right, here's a gun." Which, <laughs> as frequently as that happened, I was like, "Oh, I just I love that sound and the sound design when those things were yeah. happening." Yeah, yeah. Uh, when she's throwing coins, especially like uh, that, that yeah. was my favorite. Yeah. Little, yeah. Pretty good. I, I, I wish I had someone who could find that much money on my behalf. <laughs> <laughs> it gets to be a lot too. All of a sudden, yeah. she's like throwing you like two hundred bucks. You're like, "This is great." And just it's always looking. when you need it, you're standing right there by a right. vending machine. She's yeah. like, "Oh, here you go, just in case." Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't tell. I, I felt that sometimes when they knew that you just needed a slight tipping point to get one more thing to upgrade your vigors or get something better for, for, for one of your weapons. Yeah, it uh, definitely seemed like they were kind of biasing it in favor of like just kind of giving you a hand. Which I, th I think, and, and some people have complained that the normal setting, you know, it's very hard to die, which yeah. I, I would have to agree with. Yeah. But in order to really get the most out of that story, you don't want to have those kind of sticking points. I mean, I, I, I would like to think that that was actually a, a very well thought out decision, that it is more about the experience of playing it and not the, kind of the more gaminess yeah. of it. Creating and, and the death penalty is, is really minimal, yeah. you know? I mean, you're, you're losing a little bit of money. Um, you know, some of those guys are getting their health back, but you're, you're right back in the fight. Like, it's, it's even less of a death penalty than the, the chambers in Bioshock yeah. uh, 1 I mean, were. There, there, there are times in Bioshock where I would get in this kind of ugly loop where I, would, I was always coming out yeah. just weakened enough for the circumstance at hand. Right. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I just kind of would, in some cases, could just throw myself onto a big daddy over and over again. It's like, well, I'll just respawn, run up, keep hitting him, keep hitting him, yeah. keep hitting him. You know, eventually this is going to work. In terms of the more traditional aspects of the game that is Bioshock Infinite, uh, I mean, I, I felt that the combat was, in all, more satisfying. That might just be because of the environments that, that, that we were fighting in. I think Bioshock Infinite is more traditionally fun, right, yeah. than the original Bioshock. Yeah. Um, it's more about moving around in the, in the spaces and more about getting the drop on your enemy. And, you know, you can get on the rails and, you know, grind around and, and do all that kind of stuff. So I think just by very nature, that kind of thing is more fun. Um, than, than and, what you did in Bioshock. And the Bioshock. Vigors seemed better attuned to really kind of assist in the combat, you know. Bucking Bronco was just kind of an endlessly the satisfying <laughs> thing to do, especially if you had the shotgun in your hand. The weird thing that ended up happening is I ended up playing Infinite very similarly to how I played the original Bioshock, because I went electricity most of the time. Uh, but instead of a wrench, you know, I, I ended up uh, shooting them. But I, I specced way in favor of the wrench in original Bioshock, uh -huh. and just shock club, shock club. <laughs> And you can do that, I mean, with the melee attack and this, but the weapons, I, I felt, were a lot more satisfying. and it was, it was a lot easier to kind of get, get shots off with the, with the guns. Uh, that, but I did still find myself just, all right, I'm going to shock you, and it's going to chain to these people so everyone just stands still. Then I'm going to shoot you all in the face. And then I felt like I was playing Mass Effect by the time I got to the end, because between bucking Bronco and then the charging one that you yeah, get towards the, ram, the, yeah. the end, that's, I was doing that over and over and over again. So suddenly it's like, oh, I'm playing Mass Effect now. <laughs> Here you go. Great. The smartest thing they did with the vigors as opposed to the plasmids is having that notion with, with almost all of them where, all right, if I hold this button down, then it's a trap. Instead yeah. of like, okay, I'm going to go traps and go trap heavy and do all this sort of stuff. Like, you know, that aspect of it. Uh, 
it just made it easier to experiment yeah. uh, with the abilities. You know, it was it was a lot less of a hassle. To just and they were a lot more generous with what the upgrades on the vigors actually granted you. That you know, once once the uh, the murder of crows turns the dead bodies into traps of other crows. Yeah. It's like, all right, cool. Yeah, I like, there, there are times I'm like, I'm just gonna do that because I just feel awesome when I do it. <laughs> yeah. But I, 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 you were definitely more powerful in, in Bioshock Infinite, and I felt that that allowed for, for the game to throw a lot more enemies at you. That at least visually yeah. the combat felt more dynamic. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, just between, you know, the, the being able to kind of, like, kind of rack up headshots with the, the the carbine and some of the other, yeah. the other rifles and weapons and stuff like that, uh, and then the executions. But actually, my whole first time through the game, like they instruct you, you know, kind of in that first combat scenario, like hey, hold down X to, or hold down Y to, to execute. I did that wrong, so I played through the whole game not knowing that that was in there. <laughs> yeah. And then when I played it the second time, I was like, well, wait a minute, what do I? And then it's just like this whole gruesome animation, <laughs> I'm just ripping these people apart. I'm like, that's really, I'm, I'm just gonna do that for the rest yeah. of the game because those guys just eat it up. And the, the prompt is so small on that. We've gotten so used that's... to enormous prompts in games. It ain't got uh... a war, I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the skyhooks, that was the part that I think all of us were the most skeptical about prior to the game's launch. Yeah. And I just got kind of giddy sometimes. I, mean, I would have to say, I reloaded after some of the skyhook combat <laughs> se sequences. Yeah. Like, I could do that better, and I just I want to do it for, for my own satisfaction. I wish there had actually been more of that. I, I kind of felt like there it hadn't it wasn't even explored as far as it maybe it should have been. And it wasn't until the last level, the, the very final battle where I felt like this even is necessary at all for me to have a right. handle on and do it. So a lot of that time was spent like, I'm doing this because it's fun, but not because the game is particularly encouraging me to make the most out of it. Yeah, I definitely didn't spend, uh, you know, I mean obviously you have to get from place to place in some instances yeah. and the skyhooks are vital for that and, and, and it looks great, but in just kind of the random combat where it's like, here's this, you know, skyhook on a loop and you can just kind of go around, like, I felt that the existing loadout was so effective that I didn't need that stuff. And see, it's funny, I felt myself probably the most challenged um, in the battle where Daisy is about to kill Fink. And, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's smaller, so more cramped, but you're moving very fast, and they throw that handyman, right. and he is really, really charging after yeah. you. Yeah, the, the handyman, pretty scary. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> of all the enemies in that game, I mean, that, that's probably when, when you Because you, you just don't, like, like, I don't oh, know, no, I like, I gotta, get him, get him yeah. in the heart. And I wanted to see more of that, because first of all, he's really fast and agile for being huge. And then there's the moment where the, huge like, the, sad. Yeah. Um, and then there's, like, when, when the, uh, the rail will be electrified. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, I wish there had actually been more of that kind of stuff that keeps me on my toes and keeps me on the move. Um, because ultimately the game is pretty easy. I mean, that's on medium. It's on yeah, the default exactly, setting. I mean, yeah. exactly. they have two harder difficulty I'm, I'm settings very for a reason. I'm actually trying this on the, um, on, on the harder settings. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of not so much uh, the challenge that, that it presented, but in terms of just kind of the awe, um, when you are on the side of the rebels for that brief, wonderful moment where everything seems to be in concert with itself, yeah, yeah. and you're all charging at Fink's warehouse, and you have to bring down the airship. I mean, that's when I thought it hit its Indiana Jones kind of majesty, where it's like, I'm now yeah. flying onto this airship. I'm gonna, and, and then it's shooting at me, and I'm, you know, yeah, that, and, and yeah. just jumping off it. I'm like, I don't know how to get off this. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm yeah. gonna jump off. It was, it was almost like you know that that moment in Uncharted 2 where I realized I can jump from a jeep to a jeep. It's like that thing <laughs> yeah. I've always wanted to do in a game, but game design itself, or the limitations of the technology, have always you know kept me from doing that. Right. And it was, it was, it was, it was just such a thrill. And, and they do such a good job of, of uh, you know, just letting you feel free to experiment with yeah. uh, the skylines and stuff because, I mean, the penalty for falling off is you just get respawned, like Legend of Zelda style. It's like, ah, you didn't make that jump, here you are. Um, I thought that was really smart because then it's like, okay, well, all bets are off. I'm just going to fly around and do whatever and, and see what works. Uh, so when it comes to the moment of like getting off that airship, though that was in a trailer, so you kind of know that that's what you're supposed to do. Oh, but I, 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 I didn't see that trailer. <laughs> I'm so glad I missed yeah. it. Yeah, I know. Like, it, it's definitely... Uh, I at some point stopped watching all the stuff yeah. uh, about that game, but I think the last time I saw it was that was it was that that trailer. Um, so it's like, oh, this is the part where I have to jump off, and, 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 can, and there'll be something down there. I think. <laughs> It'll work out. It, 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 yeah. it is definitely the definition of a leap of faith. Totally. <laughs> um, in, in, in terms of other aspects of the gameplay, I was curious uh, the, the collectibles, I guess, within the game, primarily the the vox populi hidden messages. 
Um, how, how many did you guys find? Very few. Okay, me too. Yeah. And now, because now I'm replaying for the third time on, I'm, I'm on hard, and my, my whole idea is that I want to see and do everything, every voxophone, every single telescope to look through. I want to see all of this and go back and even open up all the chests when you find a, a key to go back yeah. and open that chest. I so never I'm put a, a cipher to together with a, a, a I never found any of the treasures, any of the, oh, the really? two-part yeah, things. I, mean, I would find one piece and then go like, ah, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I never felt like I was uh, desperately in search of resources in that game on medium. And I had gotten enough of you know, the different pieces of gear that I felt accompanied my play style. That I was like, I'll probably be okay. Yeah, and it's always depressing too when, I, when I've gone back and what's in there, I end up just, oh, I'm just going to take this, but I'm not actually using this piece of armor because I like what I have better. Right. Um, and and, the, and like, I, I, I liked it when it was a box of phone. That whole idea that yeah. there might be one yeah, more piece that, of information yeah, that great. might flesh out the I think world there was, for me. Uh, there's 80 of them, right? 80 yep, box 80. of phones. I think yeah. I ended up in the mid 50s on that. And, and that's the part that's actually killing me now because, you know, when. When we talk about, you know, like, oh, why does Elizabeth have, well, why does Elizabeth have her powers? Like, is that explained the somewhere? Like, am I, am I, is, is it out there? Is it, <laughs> is it because her pinky is, is in it, some other other that, dimension? Because that's, that's the theory that's going around. That's replayability at its finest. Yeah. It's not, I need to get more achievements. It's some, some, some like, arbitrary grind. It's, yeah. no, there's something pleasurable in playing the game, and there's this reward of having a better yeah. understanding of what I You know, how much time we have talked trash about audio logs, and I, I think there are so many games out there that just use them so poorly, or just, or don't, don't build a world that's interesting enough for you to care about whatever they're recording onto these things. You know, I think it's a, it's a testament to the world that they've built and the story they're telling that you desperately want to find every single one of those things. The final battle. Um, I know some people have found that that might be one of the weakest parts of the game. Um, I was definitely challenged by it. Mm -hmm. I, I think from a, from you know, I had a couple of times I didn't realize how I was trying to line up with all of the airships and just kind of tell the songbird to, to attack. Well, that it. button prompt is just sort of broken. If you if you're aimed in the wrong direction or if the ship passes in front of the skyline or something, like right. the button prompt can just go away. Like the time, the amount of time you have to press it doesn't necessarily match up with the amount of time that you actually I, I get. I failed it the first time. Yeah, but absolutely. from once again, from a drama perspective, I mean, it really gives the illusion that this is just an endless kind of flood yeah. of enemies that, that, that's, yeah. that, that's on Comstock. And it's ship. like that kind of satisfying over the top moment of just like, and I'm ripping through these Zeppelins yeah. and calling in this crazy robot bird man yeah. to do my bidding. And it, yeah, it, it, it really solves, I think, the problem of the boss battle. That it's like, you just want to feel that you're at your most powerful. And I, th I think it really resolves that issue without having to do it in a, hey, we're going to take away your power so we can have a dramatic moment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Plus you get the visual satisfaction of Songbird coming in and all these Zeppelins all around you. Plus you're on the skyline zipping around yeah. all over the place. So. Um, guys, we've talked about we've talked a lot about the game that's Bioshock Infinite. I think that the one thing I I can't figure out is where do you go to from here? I mean, there's just, both in the narrative and in many aspects right. of the gameplay, it feels so all inclusive. And I I, I, I want I, mean, I love the idea that okay, yes, there's gonna be another man, there's gonna be another lighthouse. But I mean, this is really one of the most kind of profound statements of game design and, and game narrative I've, I've ever seen. I, I think that the, where they go from here is, is a really crazy question because you know, if you think about it, they've been selling a season pass. Yeah, for this I know. Game. You know, yeah. they've they've got DLC lined up, and there's no multiplayer in that game. At least not the so, shipping version. It, which uh, at least makes me happy because there's nothing that would make me more sad yeah. after playing a game like this. Like, here's a map. Right. No. No, that's not at all. <laughs> so you'd have to wonder. They go down the the Minerva's Den path of just like here are some alternate stories set in Colombia, which I think could be really fascinating because it, it would help kind of flesh out that world and, and tell some some miniature stories along the way. Uh, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not necessarily looking for like here's the real ending or here's more with Booker like that. that that story seems very self-contained. Yeah, I don't want yeah. them to, to continually resolve or, or further yeah. explicate what, what happened at the end of this yeah. game. I mean, I'm, I'm with Jeff on that. I mean, I think Minerva's Den is the, the perfect example of the way to go with this. There's side stories, and there's still gaps that I feel like I wish I knew more about, like 
what yeah, happens? No. Yeah, not only that, there's like Comstock and what once he Booker becomes Comstock, then what? How does Comstock become Comstock? Like, what yeah. are the things that yeah. happen in between there? Like, there's there's enough there where I think you can flesh things out without, I don't know, without diluting what's yeah. already been hap uh, happening. But in, in, in terms of another game. Well, 2K Marin, Bioshock Infinite 2, it'll be great, the uh, multiplayer will be fun. Uh, oh god. What? <laughs> <laughs> Bioshock 2 was not a bad game. No, 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 you no, are, no not at all. I think that game has been so unfairly maligned. Yeah. I felt that, as I've said before, when you had something as profound as what Bioshock was, to revisit it, yeah. you're just always be living in a shadow. Yeah, Bioshock 2 so. felt like Enter the Matrix, where it's like you're kind of <laughs> Occasionally interacting with the main thing you care about, yeah. but not in yeah. a way that's meaningful, in a way that kind of cheapens the original. I, mean, I, I, I felt it was like that, that that scene in Annie Hall towards the end where he brings the other woman home and they have the lobsters, and she's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, you know, the, the first moment was just so special and wonderful. You need yeah. to just let it live on out there in memory. But assuming irrational was you know is 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 is, is with us going forward, I mean, I just don't. I guess it reminds me of like Ralph Ellison. Assuming it's with us, you think this is going to be it for them? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, nope. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think of like, you know, Ralph Ellison writing Invisible Man and going like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm out of ideas. I mean, there's right. just something that feels so cathartic yeah. from, from a creative end. I just don't I, see what you do. I think that it would be really interesting to see them tell another one of these stories. With this information out there, I think the, the challenge then becomes like, once you know how all of it works, yeah. can you successfully tell another story? in that setting that is another kind of flip on, on this yeah. concept, or do you have to leave it all behind and, and actually do something new? I mean, you know, we're, we're at the turn of a generation. It's not like Irrational is going to be shipping anything anytime soon, so they've got plenty of time to figure yeah. that out. And I suspect this will be both, uh, you know, be definitely a critical success, and, and I expect it'll probably do well it enough looks like commercially it's, 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 it's on its way uh, to for, for them to uh, make another game without corporate dogs getting in the way. Mewling. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Really interested to see what they what they do next. I mean, Kevin, I, I, there, there, there's a small part of me that going back to more traditional games that I've been playing is a little bit challenging. Well, having no, just Army come of off. Two, yeah. Devil's That's Cartel, the next so game I played. Yeah, that would be <laughs> too. <laughs> it's just as powerful in its own way. The story of Salem and Rios and what happens to them and their PMC. You're like, I never uh, saw this but, coming. But with, with, with that in mind, I mean, do you think that we're going to start to see sort of the Bioshock effect? On, I mean, this could have a healthy thing that you just can't keep bringing the same chaff to the table when you have, when, when you can really show what a game can do. I think I, certain games have to exist outside of that almost. Yeah. I mean, Half-Life 2 is one of the greatest shooters ever made, but how many shooters actually try to emulate Half-Life 2? It's, it's not a lot. It I mean, is, it's, and I think that's because it's so yeah. difficult and it takes so long to get that stuff right. You know, I mean, so many studios are working on these compressed timelines yeah. with uh, existing tech that they can't necessarily you know, make these kind of investments in. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a testament to 2K that they're willing to yeah, let I, 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 I agree. Irrational go out there and do this. I mean, it's something that they definitely do with Grand Theft Auto as well, so it's kind of their MO for these, these big games. Um, but does that work as well as an annual Call of Duty? No. Yeah. Right? No. So uh, I, th I think what we can say is we are blessed for the crazy people that make yeah. play Bioshock Infinite. Um, guys, thank you so much for your time for our sort of marathon chat oh, yeah. about Bioshock Infinite. Kevin Van Ord, senior editor over at GameSpot.com. Jeff Gertzman over at GiantBomb.com. Um, obviously, both of their reviews can be read at their sites. If you stay with us all this time and you haven't read them, by all means, go. These are great guys who have a very, very nice sense of what makes a game tick. I wrote it just for you. Exactly. Thank you for watching this episode of Spoiled Games. We will be back with a new episode in two weeks. We're going to go ahead and just let that pendulum swing about as far in the other direction with an in-depth discussion of the most, probably the second most universally opinion game, Aliens, Colonial Marines. Thanks for watching. <laughs>